Zip Noodles. J Dog back for another goddamn fucking interview. And today we got goddamn corporate death himself from the mighty fucking macabre, the creator of goddamn murder metal. How you doing today, uh, Mr. Corporate? <laughs> Oh, uh, doing pretty good. We just uh, finished the Milwaukee Metal Fest here, played early, and I get to enjoy it. Uh, yeah, it's doing pretty good today. Yeah, you guys are still, goddamn, you guys are going so fucking long, it's insane. I mean, obviously the first record, 1987, but you said you wrote, like, the song Ed Gein in 1983? I heard, like, 85, by the way, 85 is the year I was born, in case you happen to give a fuck, but 83, I didn't think it was that early. I thought it was, like, holy shit. Yeah, actually, we were in a, a different band before Macabre. All three? Now, all three of us. We just had a different name, and we had a singer. So I wrote this song in 83, and we were actually doing it with this other band before Macabre. And then we changed the band. We take the singer out and changed the name to Macabre in uh, 85. Oh, okay. Okay, shit. So, yeah, going that long, I've kind of asked this, like, even, like, Corpse Grinder, shit like that. And, shit, yeah, you, just like you said, you're older than even Corpse Grinder. How much longer do you think realistically you can physically do this? Even if you, even if at heart you're like, I want to do it to the day I die, how much longer do you think you can realistically go? Yeah, I have rheumatoid arthritis, so I'm getting affected in different joints and stuff, but it's, I mean, my guitar playing, it doesn't affect it as much as other joints and stuff. So I, I plan to keep going with this stuff, you know. I'm sure I got another good 10 years left oh, in here or something. That's, that's what George said. He said 10. I was like, holy shit, okay. So you think, and, and still, I'll never give up music. I'll always do something. So you think realistic? Because as the years gone by, it's pretty much yeah. I would say after Dahmer, but Murder Metal came out pretty quickly after that. There was a big, big gap in how long the albums took to come right, out. Right. Do you guys think you have at least another full length in you for sure? Oh yeah, I could, I could definitely do that. But it's a lot of work. It is to actually get an album ready with everything ready to record. It's a lot of work. Yeah, and. I have a lot of stuff written already. Oh, so you do have stuff written, okay. Yeah, I have stuff written, and a concept even for like the next album, but it's still a lot of work. Finishing vocals, all the lyrics, and trying to, you know, I have bits and pieces of songs right now, and some complete, so okay. it's a process, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think it's just beyond cool. This entire time, it's the same three guys, which, honestly, I can't say I can think of another band that could say, now I know some 15 year old is going to say something stupid in the comments like, Joe Blow, I was like, they started in 2010, dude, who gives a fuck? That was yesterday. I think we're the only ones that are, I mean, have stuck together this many years, I mean. I can't think of anybody Even else. bands no. like when Rush was all alive, Udino Pert left for a while, and they were, you know, so different things, you know, we've always stuck together, so, I mean, we were jamming together in 81 with Dennis. Well, how, so in 81, how old were you been in 81? So I was, let's see, 21. Oh, sh shit, okay, okay. Yeah, dude, you're old, like, or so. no, 81, I was, or, yeah, I was, like, 19. So, yeah, you're dude, you're older than, like, Jeff Becerra, a lot of these guys. I mean, you're up there with the King Diamonds and, uh, oh, yeah, and the guys that's like, yeah. Well, yeah, King, King Diamonds probably, like, 64, 65. Yeah, I'm a little younger. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, but you're, you're more, but when I think of guys like you, because, you know, play more, you came from more like the extreme metal scene of where it was coming. So when you think of that, you're thinking like Possessed, Autopsy, Obituary. But yeah, you're older than all those guys. Because I just did Becerra, and he's like, he's like 54, 55. That's usually how it works out on tour, is like touring with other bands. And like, I'm usually the oldest guy, but. <laughs> so there you go, Scott from Cyanide. You're not, he was bitches, I got 55. I was like, I'm the oldest fucking guy in death metal that pisses me off. But I can still do it. It's, I enjoy getting out there, screaming my brains out and shit, but you know. Yeah. Well, speaking of the three original members, because I watch the set, I always watch every time I'm there with his. Either I'm blind or fucking something's going on with Nefarious or he got long dreads or he's looking good. Or... Yeah, he, he, yeah, it's, it's not Nefarious. Uh, it's, 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 nefarious. It kind of looks like him. I was like, what does he got dreads? And he looked like he, he got 10 years younger. Yeah. I was like, but I was like, he looks like he's got a similar bass that he usually plays. Yeah, it kind of looks like Chuck's. But yeah. you know, Nefarious uh, lives in North Carolina. And he lives with his mom, and she is like, like uh, having physical problems right now where he couldn't come. So I, I taught this guy like the songs in a couple of weeks. I've been jamming with him for many years. He plays guitar. Okay. And I taught him guitar for like 14 years. So I go, you want to do this show? And I just taught him the songs in the last couple of weeks. Like, Fuck yeah. And he got out there and did it. Yeah. So is this literally the only first or only show that wasn't the three? Yeah. Yeah. It's the so it's first time ever. Yep. That's, yeah, okay, shit, that's pretty impressive. 
Yeah, but like, we're still a band with Nefarious. It's just he couldn't come to the show, and I didn't want to cancel the show. But I, he kind of looked like him a little. I got a little dreads. I'm like, he looks I'm like, it could be him. I was like, I don't know. I was like, maybe he's got some extensions and you know, maybe some Botox. I was like, but I was like, I'm pretty sure it's not him. He pulled it Glow's off. Glow was far, far away. No, it sounded good. He looked at everything. Yeah, yeah. He, did. he did. He did pull it off good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely fit. You didn't get some juggalo fucking Limp Biscuit looking idiot up there. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? This is fucking dumb. You know what I mean? So, yeah, no, if it was. No, kind of, it, we've been friends for a long time, me and him. And like I said, we jam guitars all the time. Lives close to me and shit. So it just worked out like that, you know? Yeah. Well, actually, so it, it crossed my mind just today at this fest. Got a little bit of a. Uh, you know, band idea for you, we, business idea, whatever the hell you want to call it. Dahmer came out in what, 2000 or 99? 2000. 2000, okay. That's what I thought. It's getting kind of trendy, kind of in a good way, that bands are doing full album tours, like Morbid Angel did it for Covenant. DSI just did it last year with uh, Legion. Uh, Mayhem did it with their Day Mysterious Dom's and Towns out. They play the whole album, right, front to back. In 2025, 25 year anniversary, Playing Dom or front to back, I think that would be extremely fucking cool, and I think people would really want to see that. We actually did it back when we were, like, before we put the album out, or the whole album, or right after it. Yeah, we played it a couple of Chicago clubs. But back then, played the whole album. But back then, it was still kind of the new album. Now it's considered, for example, right, that's actually right. my favorite Macabre album. I like every album, yeah, but that's my favorite. Neil Kernan, it's like. Probably our, our best album, you know, but... That's, I was going to ask, that was one question I was going to ask. Like, of all the shit you've done, what's the album that you're most I proud mean, of? like, the one I like least is Gloom. Okay. The recording, the budget, and just, it, that's, you know, my least favorite. But, I mean, the later shit I really like, you know, it's like, the Carnival of Killers, I like just as much as listening to Dahmer for me, you know. Okay. It's like, but uh, Dahmer, it'd be really hard to play live because... Like the Jeffrey and the Chocolate Factory has keyboards in it, and uh, you know there's other other things in there. Some songs are really hard to play. You know, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. like studio songs. Like yeah. Jeffrey and the Chocolate Factory is a studio song. You know, yeah, it's yeah. hard to do live. You know? Yeah, I actually asked this a little. Maybe you could admit like what Malevolent Creation did it last year with their Retribution album. They did omit like two songs. Like, well, it's not yeah, the entire album. That'd be the only way to they, do yeah, it. Yeah, maybe do that. And then what they did, they played most of the Retribution album, and they played like. Two or three songs of the first album, and maybe like one other song. And it was, yeah. I was like, that was it was killer though. It was, I, was like, were, I enjoyed it. They were asked to just do that, like with Sinister Slaughter, and I'm like, you know, like yeah, you should do a tour in Europe. I go, no, I want to work this before Carnival of Killers. I said, fuck that. These Europe guys. I go, I want to do a new album. And they're like, oh, well, fuck the new album. You should come out and tour Sinister Slaughter. I go, no way, dude. I go, it's been too long since we had an album out, so I got to do it. Yeah, that did, because, shit, what was the gap between uh, Grim long Scary time, Tales? Like nine years or uh, something? Yeah, it was, it was a while. Yeah, it was, there was definitely, that, I think that is the biggest gap between all albums, wasn't it? It gets tough as you get older, you know, you have jobs and whatever, you know, like the guy, uh, my bass player lives in North Carolina now, to, I had to have him come out and I taught him the songs. He and Dennis wrote the album, the last one, and... I had the bass player come out for a couple of weeks and I thought on the song. Okay, yeah, yeah. I did all the vocals on it, so. Yeah. It gets tougher as you get older to do albums, you know, but. Sure, sure, man, I mean, that, that makes lots of And then writing, too, and you have to be in the mood. If I'm not in the mood to, like, chop down lyrics, I'm like, I don't do it, but and if I get in a role, I can write a song in a night sometimes, you know? So would you say at this point you're kind of burned out on doing Macabre or just singing about serial killers, or do you still enjoy it? Or is it kind of like, eh, I like it, but it's kind of a job now? No, no, I. I mean, I I actually have written other songs besides serial killers, but that's all I'm going to do. That's it's at one point we said it's all serial killers, but yeah. And with that be, has have you ever gotten any backlash? I guess the most notable would probably with the Dahmer album, like from the family or so, contacting like, what is this about? Like, because at least like with Jeffrey Dahmer, in the public eye, his parents are probably the most notable ones that made a public appearance. Did you ever get contacted by the parents? Like, hey, what's this? Or what, what it, like? No. I, I went to Dahmer's trial, though. I know, I know. I, yeah, Jeff, the, the trial. Great, fantastic song. And then I corresponded with Gacy. Yeah, I did. Uh, that's, that's, just, that's pretty funny. I had the paintings by yeah. him, and uh, I actually got to meet him three times. Yeah. So, you know, that was like, that's a, as far as I'm going with it. I'm not someone who... No, but I didn't know, like, for example, like, well, you did the Dahmer album. If Jeffrey Dahmer's parents con like said anything, or even right, they, said right. anything, you know, they said anything publicly, like, what? Well, I don't know why a band would sing about this. I'm not exactly proud of no, it. No, like, we have we've never had any backlash from it. Um, 
you know, like, I've had a couple people cut me down to my face or something and say, oh, like some girl or something comes up and says, you know, oh, your music is like, making, it's like blood money or something. And yeah, I'm like, I, yeah, it's I go, like, okay, well, all I'm doing is telling the story. It's, uh, it's how's it different than a documentary? It's creative storytelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creative storytelling, and I hear the story and I tell it to music, you know? It's just like a newspaper or a book or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, for someone to say, you shouldn't do that or you can't do that, it's like, it's it's an art form in I, a way, I you think know? the way, I mean, I, I love it, but I mean, I think the way that they maybe get slightly offended or think it's different, like, yes, okay, you're singing about it and you're telling like a factual story, but you're also, Make it get funny too. Like in cheek. Yeah, correct. Which it is, but it's like it's just you're making. I don't know. So you, know you find the good it, and you make something funny about it. Was it. No, I mean, something yeah. that was never really planned. It's like I grew up with these children's rhymes, and you know, my mom used to buy his Burl Ives albums with all these you know nice children's melodies. So just kind of came out later in my music, you know. Like, and I don't think anyone like that plays extreme metal ever really wanted to do that, or they, you know, yeah. like okay. And I'm just like, man, it just makes it that much more demented for these killers, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, you know, not I, I don't glorify these guys. If anything, I cut them down in the music. Yeah, yeah, sure, and sure. And say, these are bad guys, watch out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, but it's, it makes it entertaining. I mean, like, yeah, scrub a dub dub three men in a tub. I mean, what the fuck? If you can't find that funny, like, I mean, that's pretty goddamn funny. It's actually, when I first heard that, I, I got to like, tell the story great. in some way. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I just do it for music. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I thought it was. And if you listen to the song, it tells the whole story, all of them. Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Albert Fish was still your favorite dish. I mean, it, I mean, it's, it's fucking funny. <laughs> well, so who would you say out of all the serial killers is the most? I guess, for lack of better words interesting to you like that's like almost that like captures like holy shit albert fish that's what, yeah okay because to me I, I i consider him probably the most deranged and that know? dean too yeah i mean i saw photos of the evidence in that dean's house color photos and it took me a while to search it and find it and i just found this like a year year and a half ago he's got like couches with ladies faces sewn together all over the couch like there's like 20 faces of ladies Oh, it's the actual, like, on, on the, the arms. Yeah, yeah, actual photos from his house. Oh, okay, In shit. color. Yeah. So if you search, like, uh, crime scene evidence of Ed Gein's house, it, it, it feels, it'll start, or just text, uh, or type Ed Gein's chair. Yeah, yeah. And this will pop up, this color in color. It's an evidence photo. With rotting faces and so all Is that the ones that he, like, that he took dug out of the graveyard? Yeah, they're all like dug up. You know, he only cared to look. He only killed the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all digging them up. Yeah. You know, with was... uh, Albert Fish, I'm sure you've seen documentaries and shit like that. And I've seen one recently. It's it probably about a, one that was like 10 years old, right? But I've also I've read books on him and shit like that, so I I know the whole story, right? The Gray Man. That's the one you want to read. Okay, man, I, I, I probably read, but anyways, I saw something recently. But I, it's 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 I was I was late to the game, maybe eight to ten years old, right? And I'm watching it and. Uh, do you believe that everything he said that he did was true or was he exaggerating it? And the reason why I say that is because when you see some of the interviewers and shit like that, they knew for a fact, and he admittedly would say, he was like writing women and shit and fucking with them and making shit up and just being a pervert and repulsive. Yeah. Obviously, he killed the kids and he said he shit. But like, for example, with uh, well, the little boy. there's probably more, though. No, but do you think that he was, he actually like chewed on his nuts and stuck around and ate his oh, penis? Oh, hell yeah. So you believe that he did? Hell yeah. Because okay. I didn't know, because part of it, I, I don't know in my mind, I'm like, Maybe he was just no, exaggerating no. to be fucking... No. Yeah, okay. So you do believe he actually did with yeah. all the shit he said? This okay. was the worst old man in history, probably, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there was worse. Yeah, that you, you know, know, shouldn't even hear about. Well, like, uh, you know, Bill DeRay's that just killed hundreds and hundreds yeah. of kids. And that was the French one, right? Them, yeah. You think about him on Grim Scary Tales. Just stuff like that. And of course, these guys were worse than fish, but yeah. for the, the that time period where yeah. uh, people were trusting with their kids and shit, they looked... Let their kid go off with them or something, or he'd abduct them when the kid parents weren't looking or yeah. something, you know? Is there any particular one that you've come across? It doesn't have to be new, maybe you just recently learned about it. It could be new or old, that you're like, okay, I'm going to sing about this one on an upcoming record. Like, it, like it captured your interest, you're like, fuck, I didn't know about this particular one, I'm going to do a song about it. No, I, I much rather go back on old songs about guys I've already done. Okay. And get and sing other parts of their life. Like, like so, I, yeah, yeah. I started writing some new Jeffrey Dahmer songs. Okay. Yeah. 
like I got one that's called Into the Fruit Cellar with You. Okay. And it's um, about this, at his grandmother's house, he lived there, and he like killed this guy and he had him in the fruit cellar, cover him up with a blanket, you know, yeah. like crazy shit, you know. So that, would, like, that song would be on the next record? Uh, perhaps, I mean, it could be a concept album for the next one. Yeah, okay. It's like I'm back and forth with that. And yeah. But if you did a concept, yeah, you would have I'd like to do an Ed Dean album. Oh, oh, okay. A whole album on Ed Dean. Okay. Yeah. And I, I got a name for the album and everything. Okay. So, I, I mean, that that's the one I really want to do next. I got a bunch of songs for it. Well, I mean, I, obviously Dahmer... I'm kind of letting the cat out of the bag, well, but whatever. Well, whatever, you know, it's always just it's good uh, exposure. And, I mean, you, and then Dahmer was a hit. Well, a lot of people I talk to, a lot of them, they, they'll say that their favorite is Dahmer. That was my favorite. I just thought the songs, the catchiness. Yeah, so the, that's the only concept we've ever done. That's what I'm saying. So that, but that would have been well, really well. Albert Fish would be great for a concept yeah. album. It but would be, yeah. We thought of, um, we played the Macabre Minstrels album, but me and Chuck started writing all these songs about Albert Fish. All children's music about Albert Fish eating little kids. Yeah, yeah. And it's sick. Yeah. It is the sickest lyrics you've ever heard. And we wrote a bunch of songs, but we never put it out. We're going to do Macabre Minstrels with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You only have the one, the one disc of Macabre Minstrels. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's five songs or something, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I wanted to do a whole album about fish called Fish Tales. Yeah. So no, it could yeah. come out in the future. We've been talking about it for years. So it's pretty much all written. You just got to record. No, it's not all written, but a lot of it is. Yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of putting a little time into it, finishing some songs off. And there's a lot of songs. It tells the whole story of fish. Yeah. You think Dennis and uh, Nefarious, they're kind of as equally as, like, still have the pulse to do it and want to do it? Or are they think one, you think, basically, you think one guy might want to hang it up before the other? No, no one's gonna hang it up. Okay, okay. No, it's it's in our blood, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, you can never stop. Yeah, it's just, just weird. You to can get... never stop, and you know, I'll I'll keep doing it as long as I physically possibly yeah, physically can. Possibly. So oh, that's, good that's it. Yeah, that's it. All right. Well, I'll let you have the last words. Uh, do you have anything you want to add, subtract, take in? I'll give you a um, tell the audience anything. Not, not really, but uh, thank you for liking our band, and we appreciate you. All right, that was, that's all we got for this one. Later, goddammit.